Welcome, Chambra. We're here on Kona at the Chambra Pavilion, and we're excited to realize that this is literally the middle of the art of benching. This is number six. Six, six. Yeah, don't be confused with five. This is number six. Well, there's five left. That's true, yeah. Welcome, everybody, from all around the world. We're delighted to have you here. As Linda said, we're in Kona, Hawaii, on the Big Island for this wonderful shout. Uh, we're here with our, our production crew and a few local Chambers that have come out to add their support and love and whatever else. Uh, and we're here with Belle, the Wonder Dog. Uh, can we get a shot of yeah, Belle? Yeah, we need a shot uh, of Belle. Because girl. she's just, uh, <laughs> she's, <butt> shot. <laughs> she's ready for, for the shout, just like so many of you. Just uh, la <laughs> lean back and take a nap and go to sleep. No, Belle's, Belle is, uh, she does that. You know, she's running around all before we you know, do something. And the moment we start in, uh, then she just crashes. She it's kind of interesting. She's very sweet. Ten minutes ago, she was barking and running protecting, around, defending, and running yelping. around. Yeah, mm -hmm. but now she's crashed out. She knows it's safe. Yes, it is safe. This is a safe space. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we have a lot to talk about today, so we're going to get into it. Oh, by the way, I'm going to back up real quick that last graphic. Uh, I just thought that was so kind of fitting for right now. You know, it's uh, it's March with March Madness. Uh, it is uh, just kind of a crazy time on the world right now. So I just thought that that opening graphic was was good. The Mad Hatter. Lent has also opened up. Lent, yeah. yeah. When how, when does Lent start? When does it end? And forty days before Easter. But what is the purpose of Lent? To suffer. Oh, okay. <laughs> what have you given up for Lent? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, oh, I know. I left Colorado winter. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, that gave was up, my... You gave yeah, up winter. Gave well, that up was a winter. tough one. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're going to take a look now at last month's shout. It was uh, shout number five last month. So you're right. That puts us uh, about halfway through the this um, series. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, there's eleven. Six yeah. would be the middle. So we always do a recap to remind us and everybody else what we did last month. Uh, this time we were at the studio in Colorado we uh, for the last one. So let's we take were. a look at that. Shout five of the art of benching. I have a couple of guests here today, and I don't normally bring guests in. I like you all to myself. But I brought a couple of guests in today. Uh, the first one is FM. We're going to talk about the FM Chambra radio link that he's been working on. So he's here. And I also brought in another guest today. Another guest because, well, we have some remedial benching work to do. So I've asked my dear friend, my colleague, my fellow Ascended Master, Tobias, to come in today. I'll talk for just a moment about Pronost. I love Pronost. Pronost is uh, the chance once a year to talk about uh, the planet. I don't usually talk a lot about it because it's all about you and about your journey. But in Pronost, we get to talk about the planet and what's happening, but now literally what you're doing and what the planet is doing is really starting to converge together. And that to me was the probably the most important part of Pronost 2022. Everything is changing so fast on the planet now, and as it does, it's time now more than ever to be your light, and for a couple of reasons. For a couple of reasons. Uh, that's why you came here, to shine that consciousness on the planet. Uh, but it's also, right now, it is such an important time on the planet for not only the, the light that you bring, but the balance that comes with that. And the other important thing about Pronost and what's happening on the planet right now and particularly as we got into the subject of artificial intelligence, uh, one of the big questions is, uh, will it have consciousness? It's causing people to say, well, what the hell is consciousness? What is it? Uh, and, and it's causing people to realize that consciousness is not matter. It's not matter. It cannot be 
uh, it cannot be dissected mathematically, scientifically, uh, with physics or anything else. But more and more really intelligent, sharp scientists and physicists are going to realize it's there. There's something very real about it. It's the essential part of the equation. So FM has been working on what we call the uh, the Chambre FM radio. Now, please, it's not literally a radio tower on Mars or anything like that. It, it's really a metaphor, but they're using special frequencies to transmit a very important message, a very simple message. The message is that it's all within you. You already know. With all of this turmoil happening on the planet and people unable to cope with it, they don't have the coping mechanisms, they're going to be looking for answers. And the genuine ones, the ones who are ready, the ones who the ones who are ready for the fruit of the rose and ready to take responsibility that it is within, they're going to be coming to Crimson Circle. Uh, these these middle of the nighters are asking questions, deep questions that you asked, so you should understand. What's this all about? What am what am I doing here? What next? Is there anybody else like? me out there. Remember that one? Is there any relief? And that's that's when so often now, uh, in, in your modern times, where people sit down at the, their computers and they do a search. Well, the one that I see a lot now is just very simple. It's, please help me. Typing into an internet search, please help me. And that's where you come in. They're going to be similar to you in many ways. They're going to be different in a lot of ways. And the last thing they need to hear is a bunch of macchio, a bunch of overly philosophical advice, a bunch of uh, even a bunch of um, like nurturing that's too sweet. They're not going to. They, they don't want that. They want real answers and. And this to all Chambra and to Crimson Circle, they're going to test you first. That's when you sit or stand firmly. In your light, you'll know exactly the right words to say. There's no rehearsed script, each one is going to be different. You're going to know exactly the words to say, or better yet, what not to say. What not to say. You're going to know when it's time to tell your story. It's when they're ready to hear it. Shambra, are you ready to be real and genuine? Are you ready not to do counseling and therapy and healing? No counseling whatsoever. No healing. No therapy. No processing. Just your light. That's it. Just your light. Let's talk about benching. Benching. Benching is not projecting your agenda onto anything on the planet. Benching is simply compassion. Standing behind the short wall, looking out at the world, being very aware of what's going on. Benching is accepting all things as they are, including yourself. Benching is without agenda. You don't sit there and try to make the world a better place or a worse place. You are simply shining a light. Let's take a deep breath and shine our genuine light out to the world right now, without agenda. And as you do, this light, it, it contains your story. It contains your history. You're shining yourself out onto the planet. And as you do, as you shine your light, you're really 
for shining it unto yourself. Well, I'm not sure if I understood that really clear. What, um, <laughs> was he saying something about no counseling or processing or I'm not sure if I really understood that. I think it's interesting to see it again because when we when you channeled that and when I was there and heard it, I thought, wow, that is incredible clarity and intensity. Yeah. So I think that he really wanted us to get that message. And now in hindsight, it couldn't have been more appropriate. <laughs> it couldn't have been more clear, appropriate and clear. Yeah, I remember last month when I channeled that, it was like, whoa, you know, that was, he was pretty clear. I mean, the, the delivery and the, and you know, it, it was really appropriate for right now. And it brought up a lot of discussion on social media, of course. Um, people were saying, well, you know, what does that mean? He's talking about Chambra. He's talking uh, about he's, Chambra. And he's talking in particular about the new ones coming in. They don't need a bunch of processing. What they need is to see you, your, you, the, your light. They don't need uh, a lot of therapies and, and even healing because ultimately they're going to discover they can do that. He wasn't talking about the rest of the world. No. He's talking oh, about no. Chambra. Yeah. And he's also talking about, at the same point, about world situations or things that come up. We've had <clears throat> plenty of chance now this last month to do our benching and shining our light. It, but if you go into it trying to heal a situation, a, and it's very tempting, it's very, very tempting to try, want to go in and heal uh, like what's happening right now in Ukraine. Uh, it's very tempting to want to, to do some type of processing or whatever. And he's saying, don't do it. Because you're going to get caught in, in, that, in that huge uh, power kind of vortex. I know he's going to talk about it today also. Oh. So, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's very clear here. And, you know, it's time we as Chambra go beyond the processing. Uh, it, it can be addictive. It can suck you in and, and it can spin you in circles. Uh, but again, he's talking about Chambra. He's talking about uh, as a master. I mean, it doesn't even make sense to have a master going through all sorts of processing. No, and it, I mean, really, truly, it, it does make a lot of sense. When, you, when I felt into it, it's like, oh my God, you know, you, you so can, and with everything going on, that's about the only thing you really can actually do that makes a difference. A absolutely. But again, it's very easy to say, well, those bastards, and you know, we have to fix this situation. I only did that under it's, my breath. It's, uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's so important to just rise above it yeah. and just shine the light. And uh, anyway, he's going to talk more good, about it good, today. Good. But that was last month's shout. Uh, it was kind of intense at times. Very, very intense. And, uh, thank you for doing it. Oh, we all appreciate thank, you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to take a look now at recent events. Uh, we're doing events again. I yes. mean, we're able to, to do different things. Uh, the most recent event was the Kasama reunion right here in Kona just a few short weeks ago. I loved it. <sighs> what? That event was incredible. And what's really cool is, you know, people make the effort to come to make right. sure everything's in order so that they can come. And... That was, I'm trying to think of nice words, um, that was one of the biggest butt-kicking events, I think, and all the attendees said it too. It well, was a butt-kicker. It was hyper-intense because yeah. Adamus was really trying to get everybody focused. But it was also marked a turning point where the first yeah. two, first of all, the Kasama reunion was only for those who had taken Kasama or Energy Works. works. Uh, it turns out all but one were key hawkers, and I right. think all but one were angels. It was a it was a very Unreal. intense core group. Yeah. The first couple of days that Amos talked about world events, and quite frankly, they didn't really want to talk about it. No, but, they didn't. But he, but he pushed it. But he did not. He he insisted. Yeah, he insisted. And uh, but his point was to let's take a look at the energies that are driving this, not right. on the surface, right. not what you read in the headlines, but what are the energies? Once you understand the energies right. that are causing things, it's much easier to do that that benching. Right. And and it's kind of a relief also because you understand well. It's here's what's really happening. Right. So uh, we talked about that for two days, and then the, the next two days we talked about Chambra, um, and we talked about Chambra issues that staying here on the planet, and and again the underlying issues. 
I would say it was one of the, the best events we've had in a while, and it was a great group, and we really dug into things. Really hyper-focused group, yeah, really yeah. just right there. Yeah. Uh, and it actually started on Valentine's Day, uh, <laughs> so we did a little, we had a Valentine's garden right here at uh, Villa we Amio. We did, And, um, oh, it was, it was pretty festive, and, um, you know, people are having fun. Here's Moisha. They needed with, comic yeah, relief. They, they did. Mm -hmm. um, we had, I think, about 27 total for the event, and just, it was, the, the sessions were intense, but what a great time we had in between the sessions right. and in the evenings, you know, we sit out, of course, Bell, center of attention, as always. As always. Should just plop right down in the middle of traffic, and... Uh, and, and a beautiful opportunity to bench uh, the view there uh, is look, that Sue has is right. looking over the ocean. So yep. what a great opportunity. And the angel in the background there. Yeah, what a deal. Perfect. Uh, great uh, discussions and lectures with Adamus, of course. And this particular shot, I think, was the Kathumi channel. He, he brought Kathumi in he for a really good, lively discussion. And then, of course, um, Bella is so well loved. You saw that her portrait was there too. Oh yeah, on, on the floor, uh, yeah. just because. Uh, yeah, that's Bella's portrait. We just set it there temporarily. But Sue Olson, um, all these Chambra love the dog, and so she wanted us to have a portrait. Yeah, oh, it's a, it's great. It's all it's hand done in Unreal. colored pencils, and yeah, good. Uh, anyway, uh, it was a good gathering, and one of the most important things when we get together like this is just getting together yeah, the social absolutely. time and the. You know, we're all going through a lot, and it's wonderful to be with kindred spirit and go out for dinner, party, celebrate, enjoy. And you can almost see that, uh, you know, we have a, always have an opening reception. By the next day, everybody's just settled into right. being in that safe space with other Chambra from around the world. That you really, see the relaxed. Really <laughs> settled it, really settled in. And, uh, and a great, of course, great food and great service yeah, uh, with Natalie and Michelle Absolutely. in the photo there. And uh, again, what a great group uh, for this. But then there's always that time. It's um, time to go home for the attendees, not for us. <laughs> time to go back to the mainland. Time for a little reflecting on what we just did the past uh, five or six days. And ending with the beautiful Kona sunset. As always. As always. So that, that was, uh, I really enjoyed that event. It was really, really amazing. And again, you know, Adamus always talks about how what he, what he puts out is related to the energy of the group. Yeah. And that was an incredible reflection on that group. It was challenging to channel yeah. some of that. Uh, it looked that, like that, it. Some of it, which you'll talk about today also. But okay. yeah, challenging. So let's take a look at upcoming okay. events, things we have going on here, uh, mostly on the island in right. spring 2022. Uh, just a quick mention that due to the COVID situation, which is lightening up right now. It is, uh, it is. But anybody coming to an, uh, an event from outside the U.S., uh, your registration is fully refundable in case you have to cancel. We know there's still a lot of disruptions with the airlines and everything else. Well, and yeah, with the, the airlines and then um, requirements changing, particularly outside of the U.S., for U.S. citizens, it, there's no issue coming to the island anymore. Right. Later this month, we have Masters in Communications. Uh, we've done that workshop once. It was, I remember, recall, it was really, really good. People Very really insightful. enjoyed it. Uh, that's coming up. We have spaces open, so if you want to get away from the cold, brutal, gray winter, wherever you are, come over to the Sunshine and, and Villa Amio and Bell. Uh, we still have spaces open. And then shortly after that, we've got time traveling with Adamas. Haven't done that workshop yet, so hard to say what there it's going to be. There are a lot be. of people, the attendees are really excited yeah. about it and anticipating that. Yeah. Well, hopefully they get here in time for it. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, it is April 10th through the 14th. We'll have to be very clear. We start at this time. Don't be traveling somewhere else and, you know, <laughs> miss it. That'd be terrible. Could you imagine? No. How would you explain You're that? You're time traveling and you missed the workshop. Because right? you weren't on yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bad. After that, uh, we've got coming up this, oh, it's, it's here uh, in right. April. Right. Uh, the Master Code Online. It's a two-day um, gathering. Linda and I will live host it from right here in Kona, Hawaii. So we're with you the whole time during the Master Code. Uh, the Master Code is... Um, uh, it's available in 10 international languages right now. And, of course, you get the e-reader and the uh, video access for 90 days. 
Uh, it's really basically about Damas talks about how all energy is coded, you know, p- put into a pattern, an arrangement, or whatever it happens to be, and uh, everything is coded. Uh, we talk a lot about the Atlantean code that brought us here, uh, and then now also creating the new Ascension code, which has not been created, so we're working on that. Uh, but a code is we also, as humans. yeah, a code is also uh, kind of the the other meaning of the word. Being uh, the code of the master, uh, that type of thing. You know, uh, one of the things would be right. one of the code is to have compassion. That's the code of the master. So uh, we also talk a lot about releasing old codes that no longer serve us, it's like clearing out the old software off of your computer and and bringing in the new ones for these times. And going through that workshop is really helpful because you you really are. We walk through that process. Right. Right. Let's take a look at the trailer for The Master Code coming up April 10th through the 14th. No, uh, those dates. Ah, welcome to the Master Code. Everything is coded. Everything. All energy is coded. But the moment consciousness is present, energy begins its coding process. Coding means that the energy, in response to the consciousness, not to thought, but to consciousness, is now setting itself into patterns. The energy suddenly gets activated. It's suddenly available, and it creates the illusion of reality. And, and please, it uh, does, doesn't mean it's false, it's not false at all, but you'll realize it's, it's quite an illusion, and the reality that you felt was so uh, firm and solid and immovable is actually very malleable, very flexible, once you understand uh, the whole relationship between consciousness and energy and coding. We're going to specifically talk about the Atlantean code that brought you here. It was the first conscious code ever known to humanity where where a group did it very consciously with an understanding of what they were doing. We're going to be going back and experiencing that and you'll be re-experiencing some of your Atlantean selves as we do. We're also going to be talking about the master code itself. The master code is really the passion and the purpose why you're here on the planet. Why it's not worth it uh, stressing about your realization, it has to be there. We're also going to be coding the Ascension Code. This is your gift, uh, one of your gifts, but a very important gift for humanity well after you're gone. Let's go back to ALT. We talk about it a lot in Crimson Circle because it is an important part of your journey, a very important part. And there's a lot of coding tied up in it, and there's a lot of emotions uh, that are part of it, a lot of history. Those who had been part of the headbands, working with the crystals who had no ill intent whatsoever, felt for the first time this thing called shame, a deep shame for disturbing this balance of beauty that was in all the lands of Atlantis, and you were watching it literally fall apart. This is the real bond of Chambra. We knew it was time to light fires, huge fires that were attended to for a period of almost two years, attended to by at least a hundred uh, beings, uh, Atlanteans at a time. We were coding. We were creating the way, the path into now. And that path was coded for each and every one of us to follow. 
go through lifetime after lifetime, lifetimes that would take us underground when the surface of the earth was burning, lifetimes that would take us from beneath the surface of the earth back onto earth itself, into lifetimes with Yeshua, into lifetimes where there was the evolution, the, 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 the birthing of religions, of culture, of music, of art, lifetimes that would take us through wars, lifetimes that would take us through mystery schools, and lifetimes that would eventually bring us to what you now know as the time of machines. It's the Atlantean Code. That's always been part of you. That's what's brought us back time after time, and what eventually brought me back to working with each and every one of you. That is the effectiveness of a code. Consciousness, addressing, touching energy. Now we're back here. Exactly, exactly, exactly where we intended to be. We didn't know the year. We didn't have a title for it. We just knew it was the time to bring divine and human together on this planet in preparation of the new human species, where headbands weren't used. The new human species that would evolve and eventually share the wisdom share the experience and share the beauty of life to all the places we now call New Earths. It's obvious why you're here. It's obvious. That's really, really amazing information. And the, the last time we did it, the mm. surveys were really strong. Yeah, they were, as a matter of fact, uh, really strong. So uh, Adama's got a grade of 98.1% uh, excellent. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. doesn't get too much better. No. Uh, and on the surveys, 80% uh, of the survey attendees said it was life-changing. 99% uh, said they'd recommend it to Chambra. And 89% uh, said it was either a good value or a good price, uh, that the pricing was, was definitely worth what they got. So uh, MasterCode is one of those, uh, becoming one of those core classes. Again, he dives deep into really what the coding of energy is all about. And it's so important to understand well, how that works. Until you know what it is, you can't release it. So that's why it's so important because right. there's such a clarity about what it is and, and the value of releasing it. Yeah, and the fact that you can then consciously code energy for your own life. Right. Uh, so it's, uh, I, I love that class. It's I can't a, wait till we, till we do it. And we'll be here with you live uh, the entire two days. It is April 16th and 17th, live from Kona. You bet. And then coming up after that. Masters in Communication, again, April 24th through the 28th on Kona. And there are still some spaces available. Check it out. Again, there's a lot of, um, uh, really a lot of uh, participation with the yes. attendees. Very it, interactive. Very interactive. Uh, the last time we did it, it was, again, also very popular. Because yeah. people really liked that they had that personal experience. And then after that, if you uh, your time machine missed the previous time traveling with Adamas, <laughs> land here in this one, May 10th through the 14th, right here in Kona for time traveling. Can't say too much about it because we've never done never it. Never done it. Yeah. It'll be interesting. But I guess in the true nature, of the theoretically, we have done it if we're tra traveling in time. So we've already done it. We just don't know yes. that we've done it. And yet. He, he alludes to this that. This is going to get very confusing during the days of the workshop. Y very y confusing. <laughs> Yeah, okay. but he alluded to it a lot in Kihak. That there is, he, we can do it, and there are ways to do it. And he, right. so it'll be interesting to see him specifically focus on that. Exactly. Focus. Okay. That brings us to summer of 2022. Uh, we have some events lined up for the summer. The first is the Sexual Energy School, June 17th through the 19th. There's nothing, you know. That's the. That is probably the single most core class of anything. Yeah. It has such an impact and such an effect on people that that is the only class that we require for attendees, the only class. And it's because it is so incredible in 
helping us to see our energy, to uh, manage our energy, and in turn to manage relationships and the world around us. Yeah, it's, uh, it is the core class. It's June 17th through the 19th. We're hosting it live as usual. Uh, I don't need to get into a lot of details about it because it speaks for itself these it days does. with Chambra. And a lot of times uh, they'll greet each other and then, have you taken SES? And they just want to make sure. So it's one of those. Some people get annoyed with it because they haven't taken it. and, and uh, That's the only people that get annoyed are the people that right, haven't taken right, it. <laughs> right. And 96% uh, of the attendees that have taken it over the years, not just one time, but over the years, 96% uh, say it's a life-changing experience or Absolutely. a good positive experience. So Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's one of those things we don't need to say a whole lot you more You look at about. the world with a whole different set of eyes. Yeah. So, but then after that, we have the threshold coming again. And we're very excited about that. That's going to be fall, I'm sorry, that's July 8th through the 10th. Right, uh, coming up this summer. So Absolutely. threshold is about encountering your dragon. Uh, and, uh, well, it's one of these things you don't need to say too much about either. But Adama says it's the last thing he'll do before realization. And it doesn't happen overnight. The dragon encounters, uh, they, they go on for a while. But uh, it's about clearing out all the inside stuff that's held in guilt and shame. And I, I was always amazed that people would come to Threshold and say, well, I really don't have any guilt or shame. And, you know, I'm all clear. And then we get into it and you find you have just some gunk left over in there. And the Threshold uh, and that whole experience helps bring it up so you can let it go. Because we, we do carry a lot of old stuff uh, and not even aware of it. Well, that's the big part. Right. That threshold really allows you to look into things and, and, um, and see this that you hadn't even seen before. Right. But it's there, and once it's there, then you can move it. Absolutely. That brings us to autumn 2022. Oh, um, where are we going to be? We're going to be right back here <laughs> in, in autumn. Uh, the first thing we have coming up is the very new, the all new, Staying in Grace oh, workshop. I'm excited. Um, yeah, we haven't done it yet, so not sure, but it kind of it means how to stay here on the planet as a master, but it's also when you're in the midst of all sorts of stuff going on, like like is in the world right now, how to stay in that place of grace. I'm really excited about that. Do they have like a pre-class you should take to be ready oh, for we, that? We should, <laughs> we should, like do a yeah a one-day pre-session before you get here just to chill out. Uh, yeah, and uh, we use the swan graphic because the swan is quite beautiful. We use the black swan because the black swan is um, it's symbolic of an event uh, because black swans don't happen very often. When an event is outside of the norm of things, when it doesn't follow the pattern, mm -hmm. when it is very unpredictable, in it, but it comes in, the black swan, and then it changes all of the old patterns and ways that have happened up until then. So there's something called the black swan effect. Well, Jeff, maybe the black swan should be the symbol for everything. It should be right <laughs> now. Yeah. And then if you've missed the other time traveling events because you're out traveling, again, you can pick it up here on October 26th through the 30th right here in Kona. Right here. And then our, uh, our November schedule is uh, we've got, again, Staying in Grace, uh, November 9th through the 13th followed by Masters in Communications, November 21 through 25. I think that's right over Thanksgiving. I think it is. Yeah. Uh, we've, and we actually, this last year, we had a great Thanksgiving we dinner did. right here because one of the events fell on, on Thanksgiving. We did. So we did it upright. And I hope that when you look at the schedule, you can see that, you know, we have a lot of Shamba that enjoy the coming to Hawaii and having that retreat energy while doing a workshop. And so it's common, we deliberately mixed up the events so that if they're oftentimes Shamar want to stay for two events. Yeah. And yeah, so we tried do. to, that's why we try to mix yeah. them up so that yeah. if you choose and to If do you are interested you in coming also, uh, make sure to check into your housing or hotel room accommodations as soon as possible because uh, the island's almost back to what it was pre-COVID. Right. So uh, places are getting booked early. Right. Uh, so do check into that. Okay, it's time now for Chambra News. Oh. Yeah, what, what do you mean? Oh, it's just a pretty pink. pink. What is that? I can't really tell. Uh, anyway, it's kind what of indicative. I, I don't know. It's, in, I just, it's weird, and that's why it fit for this month. Oh, you're right. You're on it. Yeah. Okay, and, I got it. Speaking of weird, weird. <laughs> make sure to check out the Chambra magazine. Uh, it, it is 
truly about the art of benching in these challenging times. I, I thought that it's not our usual graphic that we run on the cover. Usually, it's much softer, and but it, this was so appropriate for you, this month. You got to do what you got to do. Run that, you mm -hmm. know. And it, it, I mean, this guy is benching to the max. I mean, but. That's the way I felt recently, just looking at the, the headlines. I don't read a newspaper anymore, no, but on, no. on the internet, it's, it's like, geez, just slammed up against the wall. Um, but uh, anyway, Schomburg Magazine, a lot of great articles, our full schedule, any new product releases, and really, uh, there's a couple of things this month that really stand out. One was um, we ran the Ways of the Standard, something Adama's channeled years and years ago, uh, that it was appropriate to bring out for this. There's 16 points that he makes, and uh, it's called Ways of the Standard. And it's kind of a code, I guess you'd say. Yeah. And then also a great article by Nazir uh, Fedunkov from Ukraine. Uh, he's our social media manager, uh, and he wrote just a, a beautiful, well, it was actually a post on social media, and we said, well, we'd love to run this in the magazine. Um, and other great articles by Gene Tinder and guests, uh, guest writers. So do check out the Chambre Magazine, uh, the award-winning Chambre Magazine. We give it the awards, but what the heck. Oh, I'm excited about this. Okay, Master's Life 15. Right. Yeah, just launched this week. Uh, it is the 15th in the series of Master Life um, sessions. And, you know, the thing about Master Life is it kind of is tracking... Uh, the Chambra history, the yes. Chambra steps along the way. Exactly. Uh, you know, if somebody, if somebody says, if somebody new comes along and they say, well, uh, where should I start? I'd say Master's Life 1 and then go all the way through them because it is, it's a, a progression and it's what we've been doing, what all, all of us have been doing. This is one of my favorites though because shortly after we did this, it was like, there's there's a sort of a journey in there, right. and and right. it's it, it's a setup for you know how to live. Yeah. And it's like I can't tell you how many times I've gone back to that image and that that experience mm. during these crazy nutty right. times. It right. is so appropriate. It was beyond words for me. Well, there's seven sessions, and right. each session has a marab in it. Each so uh, and there's some very very moving experiences uh, along the way. Uh, and really, it's it's about staying here on the planet as a human and a master. You're on both sides of the river now. Uh, so the, on the human side and on the master side, the river represents the flow and the wisdom of the soul. Uh, and uh, it's really quite beautiful. It's been a while since we've had a master's life. Uh, it's one of my favorites, yeah. absolutely. Uh, you have uh, 90 days to access the video and text files and all the music tracks You know, for the... Um, uh, Marabs are downloadable, so you put those on your phone or whatever device and walk along the river while you're listening to it, or walk on the river. Uh, let's take a quick look at the recap for Master's Life 15, Across the River. Welcome to Master's Life 15, Across the River. Thank you, each and every one of you, for preparing yourselves for Master's Life 15, preparing your energies to be here, to take part in this, knowing that this Master's Life is, is different than the others, not, not only in the way I present the materials, but different for you because it marks certainly an end of a huge era of yours, and now a beginning of a time of a transition. I ask a few things as we go into our experiences, and this will be much more experiential. I, I promise not to do a lot of lecturing, because this is your experience. It's a good idea to have taken the threshold, in particular, because the threshold is that last thing you really encounter before coming to realization, as well as the sexual energy school. Uh, but if you're here taking this, I'm 
sure the vast majority of you have already taken sexual energy school. It was one of the things, important things on your path. So now I call on your soul to come into awareness. The soul is was the river. It's your energy. It's your potentials. The soul is your past. The soul is your your wisdom. I call upon that. It's your intelligence. And I call upon that now to come in. For it is the soul that started this journey. So we come to this very special place. I call it the river. It's a metaphor, it's symbolism. Some people talk about the veil. You know, there's this veil between heaven and earth. I like to view it as a river, a river that that carries all of your, your essence, all of you. Have a seat on the park bench here, along the river. You've made it. No need to dive in right now. Take a moment to reflect on the thousand or more lives, all the experiences, and take a moment to reflect on the beauty of thinking it was real in order that you could really experience it. But in a way, it was all sort of an illusion, meaning there really is no, there's no mass, there's no particles, there's, there's nothing except you, the soul, your energy. So how could anything that's really not real, how could it actually hurt you? No, it was just a beautiful dream, an amazing illusion. Here we are now at the edge of the river, having gone through awakening and, and mastery, a journey into mastery that having to shed a lot of the old human illusions and then encounter the dragon, here you are now. What is so beautiful about this moment is there are no more battles. Not with yourself, not with the world around you. No more battles. Let's take a deep breath. You've come a long way, and then finally you went across the river. You went through the veil, some might say. You went multidimensional. You became all that you are. Thank you, all of you, for your true service. I know you didn't necessarily come here just to serve humanity, but you have through the very work you've done with yourself. I thank you for your service. Now, let yourself keep floating down the river. Let yourself keep benching. Let yourself keep enjoying the beauty of this last lifetime on Earth. you could really feel into that and imagine that there's seven sessions with that kind of depth. I, I think it was the most touching master's life of all. Uh, many of them were insightful. Many of them were uh, uh, kind of crazy. But uh, th this to me was the deepest and most touching so. and, and so uh, perfect for what we're doing now. I Absolutely. mean, being masters and being human on both sides of the river. So Master's Life 15 available in the Crimson Circle store. 
uh, 90 days viewing access. Okay. Great. Well, let's move on. Uh, and just Whoa. a reminder of uh, the, the Tuesday event that we did for February 22nd, 2022. Uh, Adamus had a very special message for Shambra on that day. Uh, it's free of charge. If you hadn't had a chance to download it, uh, you might want to do that now. A lot of great insights into it. And uh, we had also asked for photos from Shambra from around the world. And we were expecting, I don't know, a couple hundred maybe. Uh, we got over 1,200, <laughs> not including. Really? You didn't uh, expect Shumber to send their photos? <laughs> yeah, not, in, yeah just not including <laughs> the ones that were put on Facebook. These were just the ones that were sent into it. Uh, let's take a quick look at Shumber Around the World uh, 2022. I mean, <laughs> beautiful expression there, so appropriate. And yeah, that's a time machine if I've ever seen one. No kidding. But great shots. Uh, and, and, you know, I was going through them the other day to select the ones just to briefly show here. And again, just so the, the look and the, and the eyes of mm -hmm. Chambra here are just so touching. And it just, I mean, it really affected me as I was looking at all 1,200, uh, everyone who sent it in. I took a look at it. But just such beauty, such wisdom, such grace, uh, and after all you've been through, all of us have been through, to be able to, to still smile and shine our light is, is truly brilliant. Uh, there were chamber from literally all around the world uh, who shot, took their picture. I had to stop for this one for a minute. Are these little people or big park bench? And <laughs> I realized it's a very big park bench. <laughs> but uh, such depth, uh, you know, that you don't, you don't really see it in yeah. uh, other people and such craziness too. <laughs> definitely <laughs> craziness. Definitely crazy. Uh, but uh, literally from all around the world. So it was, it was fun to go through these and they are available in the Chambra photo album uh, online at, I think it's photos, uh, crimsoncirclephotos.com. Uh, Jean is nodding her head behind the production desk. Yes, you got it right. Uh, and, and just go take a look. I mean, it just, there's so much. Pretty entertaining. But, but there's so much beauty oh, in, in yeah. the shots a, as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. And what hit me, it really struck me in all this was the fact that we're getting ready, or we are now doing what we came here to do. And uh, even if it's in the snow, standing outside at minus 15 degrees, Gene, <laughs> uh, we're coming to do what we, we came here to do. And we're doing it with, with uh, such grace and dignity. Uh, it's amazing. Quick reminder, the Pronos 2022 um, is, is available. Uh, right. We did it back in January, but it's uh, Damas' annual planetary trend forecast. In this one, he talks a lot about us as metaphysicians. It's a lot about time, space, motion, energy, but it's not boring physics. It's very very applicable to what we're doing right now. And it was very easy to relate to what he was saying because right. of his clarity. He didn't just jump around. I mean, he really helped us feel into it. Yeah. And then there's also a channel from Chippy, uh, Artificial oh, Intelligence. Right. And uh, that was rather interesting. It took me almost three weeks to really recover, get that out of my system. I felt the kind of the the kind of the hangover energies from it for a while. Uh, so it was not something I wanted I'm fine now. He's all gone? I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can stream it online for just $100, probably the best deal in the world, <laughs> uh, for, for 90 days video access. And, uh, it's big. Yeah. It's available as a cloud class in the Crimson Circle store, so do check it out. And once again, it's reflective of this energy that we're living in right now, and it's, it, it's intense in a way. Absolutely. Uh, so we've been doing a lot of work with Adamas kind of kicking our butts, uh, saying get yeah. all your systems together. We've been now uh, two, maybe two and a half years of really diving deep into everything. We've totally hired our, all of our uh, technical people yeah. in-house now. And I, I don't even know how big the in-house staff is, but it's got to be, I don't know, it's got to be big. 11 or 12 people. Yeah. Uh, and, the and technology people. We're working on right now uh, on a lot of what we call our technical debt, things that needed to be fixed. You haven't seen a lot of the new stuff yet because we're fixing the old. We've gone into the archives and we're, we're cleaning all of them up. But as we went in, we realized that there is so much good stuff uh, and so many old things that are still relevant today. So Gene Tinder came up with the idea of doing this thing called Spotlight each month take a product that's particularly um, noteworthy for the time and spotlight it. Uh, this month's spotlight is 
the alchemy of light and dark. Mm. Uh, I had almost forgotten about this one because there's well, there's all, always all the new things going along. But uh, this was actually done in France. Remember the France tour? I do. I do. Where we did this, uh, it was. Uh, he talked a lot about what light and dark uh, are, why they need each other, uh, what happens when there's an alchemy of light and dark. And it's actually really important at this time. Uh, the, the world has been so polarized in the last couple of years in particular, I mean forever, but really in the last couple of years. And then to understand the dynamics of light and dark really help you get beyond that polarization, that, right. that duality. And uh, again, it was from our France tour in October 2009. And what a what great set. nine sessions. It's all audio only, uh, but uh, it, it'll keep you going the whole time. It means more than ever. Exactly. So uh, we've got a little recap, but before we do, we're going to take a uh, let's take a look in on Belle how she feels about this whole thing right now. Oh, let's see. And uh, let's see, see see where Belle's at. Uh, Belle, are you enjoying this program? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. By the way, she does this on her own. I mean, we don't prompt her to do it. She does it on her own. So, Belly says, "Yes, I love the alchemy of light and dark. Look, it's on me. I got white spots, and I'm black. Yes, the alchemy of light and dark." Anyway, let's take a look at the uh, recap uh, for alchemy of light and dark. Mary Magdalene indeed understood the balance of goddess and God, light and dark, and that, along with Yeshua, that was the message back then. The message wasn't about God's anger. The message wasn't about being in the light. The way that was spoken of by Yeshua and Mary was not about some pious, light-based, fluffy energy. It was about a change in humanity, in civilization, a very, very important change, the time to bring in the divine. You are all seed bearers of this energy. Within every one of you is the conscious memory of the work that you have done for thousands and thousands of years, helping to bring in that divine seed. But the divine seed brought to earth means the integration of the true light and the true dark. The integration is about bringing in the masculine and the feminine, the Adam and the Isis, bringing them together in a way that there is no difference anymore between the two. There is not a light and there is not a dark any longer. The two integrated together into a oneness, into a completion where the terms light and dark no longer apply, where the terms goddess and God are no longer in contradiction to each other, no longer opposing, but where they're so melded together that they don't need the definition of goddess and God, masculine, feminine. This, by the way, is the essence of new energy. Yes. So I think that's going to be, I think you'll find some great surprises in oh, there. Yeah. yeah, it's a really, really uh, amazing information. Uh, it is available at the uh, store.crimsoncircle.com, the Alchemy of Light and Dark this month's Spotlight product. So a good one to jump into. Okay, and then uh, coming April 1st, in addition to April Fool's Day, coming <laughs> April 1st, uh, we are uh, opening registration for Keyhawk 12. Keyhawk 12. Wow, 12. that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Keyhawk is that annual program that we have where Adamas gives messages to uh, Keyhawkers, to Chambra, uh, twice a month. Uh, we record it from all around the world, mostly now from Kona and Colorado. Uh, but uh, gosh, this this year we have over two thousand people in Kihak. I think the current okay. session, they're always compelling. They're always filled with information. Well, again, what's what everyone always talks about is the fact that he goes very deep, and it's 
to the individual, and it's always about supporting us on this journey. And what I, we all seem to like the most is the fact is that he keeps staying, he stays with us the whole year. Yep. And so you always feel that support really feeling into your energy coming back to you. Absolutely. So just want to give you a heads up that opens for registration on April 1st. April we'll talk 1st. more about it next month at the Shout, but uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, the, the first sessions begin, uh, I think, at the end of June, early right. July. End of, yeah. uh, but we open registration early. Uh, and there is a payment plan if uh, if you want to spread it out. I think over five payments, I believe. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, could, I wouldn't I put a number on it right now. Yeah. We, I, I forget. But there is a payment plan. That's why we open it up early. So with that, with that, with that, let's take a good deep breath and a very, very special thanks to all uh, of you, to the Crimson Circle Angels, you you know how important you are to us. You make this all possible. To the translators, to uh, the ones uh, helping with the events, to our Crimson Circle staff, the volunteers, everyone. You know, it's it's a huge community, a global Amazing community. Amazing team. And we appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for making this possible. So we'll be back. We're going to take a coffee break right now. We'll be back for Adamus in about 30 Four minutes. Jeff, in some countries it could be a glass of wine because it's so late. That's true. I have a glass of wine. And next yeah. time I'll put wine on here. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll be right back. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. it.